Hey, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Thank you, Lord, for this time to have this discussion together. And we thank you for encountering us in the Old Testament, to your guidance and leading us. But we also thank you for the gift of this community and how we're able to grow and learn together in order to uh, grow closer in relationship with you. Amen. Hey guys, and welcome to this video. In this video, we're talking about the Old Testament. It's a pretty fun video. It's a different one. I ended up we had, we had a chat with a whole bunch of the other students. There's four of us all together, and we talked about the Old Testament and how uh, we found a new love for it over uh, just learning more about it, studying it. We've been taking a scripture class here, and we went through the Old Testament just scratched the surface because there's so much. For our scripture project in the midterm, we decided to kind of just come together and have a discussion about it. Uh, we studied more specific topics in the Old Testament and uh, written some papers on it, so it's pretty cool. But we came together and had this great discussion, so I wanted to share with you guys here. We really enjoyed it. I hope you'll enjoy it as well. Want to highlight something for me? What? Uh, what color would you like? After the 62 weeks, Christ you shall know, be slain. You know, okay, we got to be real cozy so we can all fit in. Holy Spirit. Pain, pain, <laughs> salvation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, salvation. Okay, we got. I got some bubblies for you guys. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, this is a big podcast. Oh, there's there's four now. different kinds. Yeah. Are we actually recording this? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> it's all right. Three, two, one, send it. Uh, oh. <sighs> Nothing like a good bubbly to make the title sound better. <laughs> It's always more vision. So we've just been going through a scripture class all together. We have Matt here, Keelan, and Adam. <laughs> oh, wait for the pass. <laughs> uh, it all comes down to uh, faith and trust. Like through all the presentations that the people did, I'd be like, what I really learned from this is just trust in God, you know? And all of the figures, um, that we can learn from is just they had a lot of faith and trust in God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And coming back to that. Yeah, and just even that, it's like why did God want Abraham to kill Isaac? Is because not because he wanted him to actually go, it's just to see how much he actually trusted God. Mm -hmm. Because he didn't actually want Isaac. It's crazy too, because you look through like just the history of the Old Testament. And the Jewish people, like they they sin so much, but then they keep going back to God. Yeah. Because First of all, like God goes to them because he loves them, but also they still have to return to that, which means in that they also trust God. Because like they get captured into Babylon and like everything looks crappy and then all the like and there's all these things that happen, but they just get pulled back into it and they go back to God. Yeah, it's like this constant story of uh, uh, creation, the fall, redemption, yeah, yeah, yeah. and like mercy and forgiveness. I totally relate like when we're talking about trust. I was focusing a lot on Job um, and yeah. about how he. he <laughs> what a guy! Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, it's a boring boys and girls. A little bit of trust. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he just, like, through all of his suffering, he couldn't see where God was in it, but was just so real with God and was like, I need to know you personally. I want to know why I'm going through this suffering. Um, and through the help of all well, the people of his times and his friends, um, yeah. Realizing that suffering actually is a build of, building of character, and that it can actually help you in the long run in the, in your life, you know, um, and that even though we don't see God's hand prevail in every little small thing, especially in suffering, um, that we can still have trust that He's good and that His plan is better than ours than what we can see. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. It's kind of like just keeping that whole overarching story mm -hmm. and big picture in mind. Yeah. Like through reading, it can get. Just weird at times, yeah. just like all these like, details. We're like, yeah. what the heck? Well, but like, unless you keep the big picture of the entire, like, what is, what is, why does this matter in the in the whole story of the Old Testament and how it all kind of comes together, mm -hmm. right? Then you can't really see the significance of it. It's kind of harder, yeah. and you can't go into the details without knowing the whole big picture. Like reading the book, this the real story. We read this uh, as a class. It's from uh, Edward Reed and Curtis Martin. But just like getting the basics of the whole story in like the big picture so uh, clearly and understanding it in that kind of way. It's crazy too, because like what? Because we in our class didn't even get to the basics, like the top level. Yeah, so we're much. just like scratching. Like it's insane. <laughs> so it's like this, the level of scholarship and study that's come out of the Catholic tradition, especially since Vatican II, Second Vatican Council of Dei Verbum, is insane. It's immense. Mm -hmm. Like. Mm -hmm. 
you can seriously get lost in it. There's libraries and libraries full of scholarship. It's amazing. Yeah. Let's yeah. come out of this, and we're like, you can't. Get, and this is the big thing that I just kind of like came to realize. It, just like coming to the Old Testament and just reading it, you really encounter your littleness of like, oh my gosh, there's yeah. so much to know. And then it's kind of ironic because like that is the story of the Old Testament is all these people coming to realize and encountering their littleness and their poverty and seeing like, oh my gosh, I, like I need God. And then yeah. then coming to the realization that. No matter how little they are, and even in their brokenness and littleness, yeah. God still wants to use them and has a big plan in working in their lives and working through them. There's there's so many inspiring characters too. Like you go through, you just like look at all the leaders yeah. and what they did and their faithfulness and in spite of everything. Like honestly, if I was Moses, I would have lost it and pieced out. Like Mount Sinai had to come down and worshiping a calf that happened by accident. <laughs> yeah. Nice one, Aaron. Um, like, I'm out. I'm done. And then also being like Joshua having to follow up Moses. Exactly. Yeah. And then, yeah. like, that, all the pressure and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or like King David. Like, King David is, like, he goes from being the great promise king of old, and he comes in, and he's like, all right, I'm rocking, I'm doing real well. And then he screws up royally. <laughs> <laughs> like, he blows it. He goes up that far. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and still is able to come back and be faithful to God and God still is with him in that and trusts him in that to be a leader of the community despite his own sin and meets him in his own sin. It's, it's so beautiful, the story that way. And also it's like most of the characters, it's like whenever whenever you see them fail, it's like, oh, that's when God comes back and be like, okay, I'm not done with you. Mm -hmm. and like gives them hope. And like I'm. You know, there's a bigger purpose, and I'm gonna use you even though you're a complete failure. <laughs> <laughs> Gives us hope. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like, you totally suck, but God has <laughs> so I'm gonna figure it out. Yeah, just gotta surrender. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good stuff. Definitely. Reading the Old Testament, I found it very intimidating at the start, though, because yeah. I was like, I don't, I don't like it. the yeah, words. So like, it, it doesn't really make sense. Like, how how can God even talk to His people when He's not even human? Like, mm -hmm. what the heck? You know, like I I couldn't understand that. But definitely having the resources that we did in class were very helpful. Like the real story, the Bible compass, like being able to break it down and it to make logical sense more mm -hmm. um, compared to the New Testament is a little bit easier. So definitely, I would recommend for people who want to read the Old Testament to get those resources because, yeah. you know, and don't be intimidated by the Old Testament because mm -hmm. it, there's so much beauty that you can see um, in the, the back and forth between old and new. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, getting a, a better understanding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the real story, this one is like, I do this book to anybody. It's yeah, so, totally so easy to approach mm -hmm. me too. Then we had the Bible Compass. Mm -hmm. uh, this is really good. And then this one also, I, I like getting into. It kind of briefly touches on all the books in the Bible. Mm -hmm. It has a nice introduction. But yeah, just like getting a bit more information. Don't go like too, I mean, you could if you want to get into that like big. Yeah, your own biblical commentary on that stuff. It's, yeah. It's and like, I mean, it's like, again, it's this thick and like 2,000 words and it's like reading a, I mean, it's a textbook. It's literally just like, uh, this is insane. But there's so much more to draw out of the Old Testament that you don't even realize. And, yeah. and especially the Old Testament, because it informs so much of who Christ is mm -hmm. and what he's entering into, is you get this whole Old Testament history, which is not just our, which first of all is our history, but it's also Christ's history. Mm -hmm. And Christ entering into a Jewish family was going to be raised in these stories, and he also would have raised, heard these stories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like these figures of Moses and all the great Old Testament prophets, Christ would have understood these and known these and entered in at a point in history after all this happened for a reason because it set up so much more for him going forward and his church going forward. Mm -hmm. And then I think to start with, I would say, like, yes, it's good to get uh, other resources, but to realize that this is like the word of God and when approaching it, just ask the Holy Spirit to kind of uh, open it up to you, you know, and see so what you can we can get out of it. Yeah. Don't be afraid of it. Because yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of people are intimidated by Old Testament. I know. Yeah, yeah, I definitely was as well. And still am in some ways, yeah. but you know, you know, it's a learning process. Totally. And then I think to wrap up on this, a, a cool thing that uh, I realized when just understanding the Old, Old Testament is how I used to see it as just like a whole bunch of stories of people, um, all these men and women seeking out God and trying 
trying to get to God, you know, but really, in reality, it's more a story about God seeking yeah. out man and seeking out humanity because he desires a relationship wow. and then also uh, personalizing that and seeing how, like, even in my, my own personal history of, like, my past and all the moments and experiences and the people I met in my life, it, it was all God seeking me out, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. and that is what uh, I can see now looking back, like, oh yeah, that was totally God there. Mm-hmm. And then uh, seeing the love of the Father and how He desires relationship and, and union with, with yeah. His sons and daughters, and that is what the Old Testament is yeah. about, you know. And Christ speaks so strongly in that too. Yeah. Like, you can do it, you just like, even in the daily readings, so you go to the daily readings and you get some random Old Testament passage you've never heard of, and then it nails you exactly where you needed it, and it speaks so clearly and so beautifully exactly in your situation, exactly what you're struggling with. Yeah. Exactly. It's just going to inspire that hope that you need, like, every day, right? And that's mm-hmm. why it's, like, so important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think another thing, too, is, like, the Old Testament kind of just goes to show, like, God's perspective on us, too. Because sometimes it's hard to, like, just think outside of ourselves and, like, the way we see God, but how does God actually see us? Mm-hmm. And, yeah. like, you know, even with Moses and the Golden Calf, like, God just wants to, like, okay, li- obey these, and it's, like, he just looks down and like, you know, like Jim, Jim's like, oh. <laughs> you know, his brother. Well, I love the biggest sigh ever. <laughs> oh, God, it's like, oh. <sighs> no. <laughs> like, they're already yeah, worshiping he, a cat. Yeah, he, <laughs> he, he sets up a new combo. Oh, yeah. He's so hard. He's like, oh. <laughs> Split the seas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not ocean open up again. Yeah. yeah. And, and remember, the word of God is alive. And, like, it, it doesn't apply to our lives right now. Um, yeah. And it's, yeah. God will speak to you if you open up your Bible. <laughs> yeah, just to like, do your best, approach it, get into it, try and conquer God in it because yeah, He's seeking you out. Saint Jerome picked it for a reason. It's good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> not you. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Maybe one day. Oh, yeah. And that's what this, this sets you about our story to mm-hmm. salvation and sainthood. <laughs> yeah, we're building. We're making it. <laughs> there we go. Making it. <laughs> Okay, well that is it guys. That was the discussion. It was so much fun. You learned so much by talking to uh, other people about your passions and how we've all kind of uh, grown in love for the Old Testament and how uh, we've learned so much about it, but also just barely, barely scratching the surface. Once you realize you're a part of the story, I couldn't help but but ask myself um, who I want to be and what do I want to do and how I want to be remembered. Those three questions. Who do I want to be, what do I want to do, and how do I want to be remembered? Who do I want to be? I want to be a faithful and righteous man like uh, Moses, Joshua, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David sometimes. <laughs> and what do I want to do? I want to proclaim God's kingdom and glorify and praise the Lord uh, with my life. Um, and essentially what I want to do is the will of God. And that's what a lot of these Old Testament figures uh, were seeking to do, the will of God. And how do I want to be remembered? Well, I want to be remembered as a saint, basically. A man who lived for God and for others and not for himself. And the Bible is full of these stories of some people who decided to live for themselves and uh, what kind of takes place when that happens. And also, amazing men and women who, who live for God and live for others. And this is, this is what it's about. Each day we're offered this decision to, uh, who, to ask ourselves, who will I serve? Will I serve myself? Will I serve God and, and others? And so it's important to wake up and ask ourselves, who am I going to serve today? And, and see that in light of all the Old Testament, we can learn so much about uh, what it means to serve God and be a faithful and trusting uh, son and daughter of, of the Lord. Okay, well, I hope to have more discussions and chats like that with the students. It's so fun and they have so much to offer. It's incredible the amount of joy and uh, peace, excitement, there is in all the young people here in this community for the faith and for God. Uh, I've been learning so much from them. It's been unreal. I mean, it's hard to describe. Okay, well that's it guys. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel and uh, leave a comment down below if you like this video and some of your thoughts on it in the Old Testament. Okay, well continue to seek the truth and we'll see you guys next time.